about a very important topic of English which is errors. Now errors we cannot say is a topic, it is actually the points where we go wrong. Maybe because we are not thorough with the rules of English and it can be due to lack of practice. So in order to excel in English and be a master of this subject, it is very important that you keep on understanding and you keep on practicing. The more you practice, the better we will be in communication. So uh, here in this video, we will be talking about errors in modals. But before that, let us understand what are modals. Now modals are all those words which are used. They are, modals is actually an auxiliary verb. Now these verbs are used for making any kind of obligations or for seeking permission, for making requests or in order to show someone's responsibility or to show some compulsion. So for all these activities we make use of different type of modals and some of the modals can be can, could, shall, should, may, might, used to, have to, will be able to. So these are some of the modals. They are the examples of modals. And now in this video, we will be understanding how we use modals incorrectly and the rules in order to make sure that in a particular sentence, we make correct use of modals. Now, definition, modals are basically, these are the auxiliary verbs. Or we can say the other type of auxiliary verb. So these auxiliary verbs are used. So we can say which are used for making any kind of request to seek permission for request or for seeking permission or we can use modals for uh, showing some responsibility and if not responsibility then for some kind of compulsion. So for all these things we make use of modal verbs. So, example of modal verbs can be, example is can, could, might, shall, will, able to, must, should, etc. These are some of the examples of modals. Now, one by one, we are going to understand each type of modal so that we are sure that in what all conditions, which modal is used. So, here we are going to particularly focus on the conditions or on the criteria where each type of modal is used. So, first condition is that while making request. Now, whenever we are making some kind of request, we will always make use of modals like can or could. While making any kind of request, we will make use of can or could. And if any other modal is used, instead of these two, our sentence will be wrong. The usage of modal over there will be wrong. Now, let us understand this through example. Here the example can be Should you come to pick me up? When I say should you come to pick me up my sentence over here is wrong. There is an error in my sentence and that error is the usage of my modal over here. I said that whenever I'm making some kind of request, I will make use of can or could. And the rest of the modals if used will make my sentence incorrect. Here I'm using should instead of could. My sentence is wrong. To form a correct sentence, I will say 
could you come to pick me up? And when I'm saying this, my sentence is now correct. Why? Because the correct usage of mod modals is now used. Now, another example can be, must you please pass me the salt? When I'm saying must you please pass me the salt, now please is again used for making the request. And for making requests, we can use can or could. Both are not used over here. My sentence is again wrong. There is an error in my sentence and that error is must. Now instead of must, I can say, can you please pass me the salt? And when I say, can you please pass me the salt? My sentence now becomes grammatically correct. Why? Because according to the rule, I have made the correct use of my modal. So this is the first area where we have to make sure that we are using correct modal. That area is that whenever we are making requests, we have to use can or could. Now let us understand various other errors which people might make in modals. But we need to make sure that we are using correct modals in our sentence in order to avoid those errors. So the second area is that whenever we have to seek some kind of or I can say whenever we want to show some compulsion or necessity. Whenever I have to show any kind of compulsion or necessity, then we make use of modals such as must or have to. We either use must or we use have to. This can be best explained through examples like first we can show the errors and then find the error. So, my example over here can be, I say that uh, you should slow down your speed in front of school. When I say you should slow down your speed, now this is some kind of compulsion or a necessity which you need to have. There is a compulsion that whenever someone crosses the school or it reaches some place near the school, it is our responsibility to automatically slow down because you never know when a, when a child can come and cross the road, right? So you should slow down your speed in front of school. Again, my sentence is wrong over here. Why? Because this shows some kind of compulsion. And whenever some compulsion is shown, instead of should, we must write must. So I will say you must slow down your speed in front of schools. And when I say this, my sentence over here is now correct. So I found the error and I have now corrected that error. Another example can be you might reach there on time. Now, when I say that my sentence should indicate compulsion, is there any compulsion? Okay, might over here is correct. You might reach there on time. But here I am making some kind of prediction. I am not supposed to make prediction over here. and I, I have to show some compulsion. So again, my sentence over here is wrong. I will say, you have to reach there on time. 
And when I say have to, now it shows that it is necessity, it is compulsory to reach that on time. And so my sentence over here is correct. So this has to show some kind of compulsion or necessity. Now the third area is that whenever we have to make some kind of predictions, Whenever we to make some kind of predictions, in that case we make use of may or might. Right? For making any kind of predictions, we should use may or might and not anything else. Here the example can be like I say, it should rain today. When I am saying it should rain today, it, can anyone make it compulsory for the rain to shower? No. No one has that much of power to, uh, to make the rain fall. Right? So, my sentence over here is wrong because should, what I said should, should be for making some kind of, uh, to show some kind of responsibility. But here, it, it is not the responsibility of the rain, right? Here my sentence is wrong. No one is responsible to bring the rain. It is according to the weather, according to the conditions. So I will say, it might rain today. And when I say it might rain today, then my sentence over here is grammatically correct because for rain or for any kind of weather, we will only make predictions. And it is not some kind of compulsion or the responsibility. It is just that we have to make the predictions. If our predictions now, because of artificial intelligence, the predictions are almost correct. But still it can go wrong because it is there is nothing in our hands. It is all in the hands of God. So for weather or for anything like that, we can just make predictions. We cannot say with 100% accuracy. Now remember that whenever you have to use modals in negative form, then you just have to enter or you just have to write not before or after the modal as necessary. Right? Basically, it is after the modals that we write not. So now the fourth point is that when using modals in negative form, whenever we are using modal in negative form, then use not after the modal. What I mean to say over here is that you just have to write or you just have to use not after the modal and nothing else. For example, people make errors like like I say that we don't should not Wake up till late. When I say we don't, should not wake up till late, here there are two modals at the same time which makes my sentence go wrong, which shows that there is some kind of error in my sentence. I will say we should not wake up till late and this is the correct formation of my sentence otherwise my sentence was wrong it is just that whenever we have to make use of now should is being used as negative when i have to use any kind of modal in negative form i will just add should uh, sorry i will add not after my modal and nothing else nothing like do not or is not is required so this is another area where people might go wrong. If the rules are known, there will be no mistake in your sentence. Now, next criteria is that 
The modals like can, could, shall, may, might, have to, they should remain as it is. Okay, so that is use modals as they are. Use modals as they are means that you cannot have modals in plural form, right? We cannot add S, E, S, E, D like that. After the modals, we have to use the modals as they are. For example, I say over here, Shweta can swim. When I say Shweta can swim, now there is no word like cans in our English dictionary. It is only can. Right? So here we have to use the modals as they are. So here my sentence over here is wrong. I will just say Shweta can swim. And this makes my sentence correct. Next example is Minu wills do her homework on time. When I say Minu wills do her homework, there is no word as wills. My sentence over here is again wrong. I will say, Minu will do her homework on time. And this makes my sentence correct. Minu will do her homework on time is a correct formation of my sentence. Otherwise, my sentence having wills as a modal was wrong because wills is no modal. So, in this video, we have covered errors which can occur in modals by using modals. Then, we've also discussed the various criteria which are meant for using different type of modals. And if those criteria are known and if we understand those criteria, then there are no chances that we use wrong modals in wrong place. Also, we have understood that Modals should be used as it is. There is no present tense. There is no past tense for the usage of modals. It is just a word which has to be used as it is. So, if you keep on learning, if you keep on practicing, and if you keep on reading newspapers, novels, etc., you can understand English much better. You can understand which words should be used at what particular place. So, I suggest that you should keep learning and you should keep practicing.